Good morning, students and my listeners. You're welcome to this online platform. Today we will be talking about the focus of speech. If you remember, in our previous classes we treated poetry and then we treated elements of poetry. And I told us that today we will be talking about figures of speech. Alright, under figures of speech, these are the ones we will be taking for today. In our subsequent classes, we will treat the rest. When you talk about figures of speech, what does it mean? Whenever you hear about figures of speech in literature, figures of speech are expressions. They are expressions whose meanings are far from their ordinary appearance. This is a better way for you to understand it. They are expressions whose meanings are different from their literal appearance. Remember, when you talk about literal, it is different from literal. For figures of speech, what they mean are outside their literal appearance. Their meanings are outside their ordinary appearance. They are far from what its ordinary limits. What we mean here is that whenever you talk about figures of speech, you are expected to think deeply to understand what those expressions or those words means. mean because they are of literary inclination. Now, the first one will be talking about irony. Whenever you hear about irony, what does it mean? Irony refers to words or expressions used to state the opposite of what a person has in mind. What we mean here? When a person verbally, when a person says something and means the opposite, we refer to such an expression as being ironical. When a person says the opposite of what they have in mind, that is to say that what the mouth, the mouth is saying is not what the person has in mind. That is irony. There are different types of this irony. That is why you see these types here. There are different types of irony. We have the verbal irony. This adjective, verbal, is to tell you that this particular type of irony focuses on, on what you say with your mouth. That is when a person says the opposite of what they have in mind. When what the person is saying is different from what the person really means. You refer to that as a verbal irony. Let us take, for instance, that particular moment when your mom says that you should go get me a glass from the kitchen. And the moment you are about to leave, you hear her say, when you get the, gla uh, the glasses, break them on your way. Actually, she does not mean that you should break them. But this is her way of telling you to be careful with those glasses. That is verbal irony. She says, break them on your way. But she has a mind to tell you that you should be careful. That is verbal irony. The second type of irony is dramatic irony. This time around, it does not involve what you say with the mouth. From the adjective, dramatic, this tells you that it is an irony that comes from movies, from drama works. Now, dramatic irony is that situation when a character or an actor or actress in a movie is ignorant, is unaware of something that is already known to you. That particular moment when you are seeing a movie and then the character, you are seeing a movie or you are reading a play, the character in that play or the actor in that movie is unaware of something that is about to happen. But you as the audience, you as the person seeing the movie, you already know about it. We refer to that as dramatic irony. You find out that there are situations where, in which maybe, in a movie, a little child is about to be poisoned. And the poisoned food has been presented to the child. And you see the child jubilating, happy, that food has been presented. But there is this sound that the movie will make to tell you, the audience, that something is wrong. That actor, the child in that movie does not know about this. But you, as the audience, you already know that something is wrong. This is what we refer to as dramatic irony. And of course, it is totally different from the verbal irony. And the third one is the irony of situation. This one often happens around us. 
irony of situation generally that particular moment when you meet the opposite of an expected situation maybe after school you're very hungry and then normally whenever you get home at two or three you always have your food in the kitchen but on this particular day you are rushing very hungry expecting to meet food and then on getting to the kitchen you find out that every plate there is washed same thing with the pots that is an instance of drama of irony of situation what you expect is not what you need you expect something different and you need something different that is irony of situation all right now we that is about irony the next one is sarcasm whenever you hear about sarcasm sarcasm is a part of irony but there is a little difference and that is the reason we are treating it separately Irony is an ironical statement, but this time around, this ironical statement is meant to hurt a person's feeling. If you take a look at the other type of irony we have here, this one is meant to, to tell you about something, to emphasize on something. But for sarcasm, sarcasm is mainly aimed at hurting the feeling of, a, of somebody. Whenever somebody uses sarcasm, that person intends to hurt another person. Let us take for instance that you are in a meeting or in a class where you have a particular person this particular let me say a girl god and his wife and their children they know that this girl is very ugly and then the girl steps into the class and somebody says all stand our beauty queen has entered what happens you find that that girl will get offended whoever said that did not use offensive words you said our beauty queen but you said that with the intention of hurting her feelings we refer to that as sarcasm Remember, the difference between sarcasm and irony is that, uh, and irony, yes, is that sarcasm is meant to hurt the feeling of a person. The third one, simile. What is simile? Simile is a figurative expression that is used to compare two things, to compare two qualities. To com you compare them using words like like as if as though and others you compare two things that are not the same thing but you compare them using things like this for instance when you have obi fought you see like obi fought like a lion in the field this whoever is speaking here compares obi to a lion why because of the way obi fought obi fought like a lion in the field this particular expression is a simile. You have the second one. She is, you will see, as calm as the river in the morning. This person, her calmness is likened to that of the river in the morning. And because of the use of as calm as, we refer to that as a simile. And the third one, the metaphor. This is also used to compare two things. But this time around, this is a sharp comparison. This time around, you do not use these words. Instead of saying that he is like this or that she is as calm as this, you say he is this. You don't use as. It is the same comparison, but these words are not there. Let us say, for instance, instead of saying Obi fought like a lion, this sentence here says Obi was a lion. Obi cannot be a lion, but the essence of this is to tell you that Obi did something that should be for a lion in the field. Obi was a lion in the field. This time around, this is metaphorical. It is the use of metaphor. She has a golden heart. That is to say that her heart is being likened to gold. But instead of saying that her heart is like gold, this person says she has a golden hat. This is metaphor. All right. The fifth one, personification. When you talk about personification, personification in literature is when you give human qualities to inanimate objects. When you make things that are not living to appear like they have lives in them. When you talk about non-living things as if they are living, you are using what we call personification. An example 
when somebody says, the sky wept heavily last night. That is to say, that it rained. The sky wept heavily. Simply, this is meant to say that it rained last night. Remember, we said that in figuratives, you use expressions whose meanings are far from their ordinary appearance. Ordinarily, that the sky wept heavily. Somebody who does not think very well would ask you, how is it possible that the sky would weep? What happened? Is it possible that the sky will weep? But because you are using figurative expression, it is expected that the person will think deeply to understand that what you mean is that it rained. But in this situation, what you are using is personification. You have given this quality, which is meant for a living thing, which is meant for humans. You are giving human qualities to an inanimate object. And what is that? The sky. The second example here, the gentle breeze. This breeze is an abstract. But you say, the gentle breeze whispered courage into my ears. It is not possible that the breeze will whisper anything into your ears. You are giving, by this statement, you are giving human qualities to this breeze. And that is why we refer to that as personification. Alright, the sixth one, apostrophe. These two, you have to be careful because at times they confuse. Same thing with these. That is why I give this emphasis. This, that is why I give these illustrations for you to be able to differentiate them. Personification is when you give human qualities to inanimate objects. But when you talk about apostrophe, apostrophe is when a person speaks to an inanimate object. This time around, you are not giving it a human quality. You are not talking about it. You are talking to it. 